Okay. Good morning, dear father Kwaku Nicolas. I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm very glad to see to have you here as a guest. It's for the first time in my life when I'm doing an interview uh, with an African Orthodox priest. That means a lot to me, especially because of the fact that I'm very much getting involved in everything uh, concerns uh, Orthodox spirituality in different countries uh, that are not Orthodox in their majority. As for example. Uh, some years ago, I have published a book of conversations, a book of interviews with different Westerners converted to Orthodox churches, for example, those coming from Germany, from Italy, from France. And uh, it was something outstanding for me because I didn't expect to find uh, any Italian citizen uh, who had chosen, uh, as for example, the conversion to Orthodox Church. It was very surprising for me, but at the same time, it was an amazing meeting for me in uh, this world, um, in this magical world of Orthodox Church. So I'm very happy for having you here in front of me. It's, it is gonna be certainly a very interesting testimony for us as Romanian Orthodox, because uh, as a matter of fact, uh, and unfortunately, we do not have a good idea on what orthodoxy in Africa could mean. And this is why I'm very glad, I'm very glad that I really thank you for the fact that you accepted my invitation. So first of all, before we talk about orthodox spirituality in Ghana, please tell us something about you, about your spiritual personality, about your road to orthodox church and something about the culture of your country. Me personally, I really want to find out more information about Ghana. Thank you very much for giving me such a platform. And as I've told you, my name, I'm Kiki Nicholas from the Ghana Orthodox Church. Our church is being handled by the Greek Orthodox. We are under the canonical of the Alexandria Patriarchate. The church was in Ghana for so many years, whereby we don't know it was just for Orthodox in the centuries. And around 1970s, 1980s, the youth leaders, who is now the actress of Ghana, Father Joseph Fami and Father and Mr. Godfred Manti, they invited the Greeks. And on uh, 1974, at the first meeting, cannot a uh, Christian Council military head in Accra. That is whereby the actress, Father Joseph and Mr. Godfred met uh, Mr. Callistos, they read a book and they said that they belong to Orthodox Church, Orthodox Church going here, going here by nowhere to be found. And later got into a, a place whereby they find the same with one of their priests called Father Puka, who directed them the feet. And as time moved on, the Greeks came inside and we were introduced. At that time, the church was in Ghana. It's about 100 years whereby we don't know anything called liturgy. And during the participation of our youth leaders, but now he's the actress, Father Joseph. And with his help, he helped the church to invite the groups. We don't have something called like the liturgical book or to read the service. We don't have that like that. But with his help, they invited the Greeks to come over to take on the church. They directed at our feet, how the music, the hymns, and some of the Father Joseph organized people to be baptized and to people to be ordained as priests. Fortunately, he was not ordained at that very year because his work is plenty. He's a musical priest. He used to teach the Pascal music. And fortunately, he's such a good person we know in the community in Ghana. And formally, Ghana is now the fastest growing community in the Greek Orthodox Church. And I can say under the bishops, Ivory Coast, Mali, Sudan, they are under the Bishop of Ghana. And our bishop residency in Accra and take control of the countries that have been mentioned. We have Bogfest, Bulgaria, Bulgaria, Senegal, Mali, Burkina Faso were under the control of the Bishop of Ghana. When I grew up, the church was there. Both my parents were 
Orthodox Christians. My grandmother was also, pardon me to mention his name here, she's called Sarah. And I was also given birth by the two Orthodox Christian people, named me Kweku, and they, were, they named me after the a son of the church saint, Nicholas, which feast is being celebrated 6th December as the wonder worker, Saint Nicholas, who preached along the coast. I was named or dedicated to his name. So I am called Nicholas. Fine, when the church was growing, our first bishop I saw who picked me up to bless me to become an altar boy is his eminence, Pantelemon Lapadoros. He is now in America Monastery during to his head. He was changed. During his regime, our patriarch is Petros, the late Petros. They came a visit in Ghana around 2000, the year 2000. I was very young, but I can see then time. I saw the Petros, he gave me his blessings. We do a choreography, we do a culture display for the patriarch to smile. And alongside, they went after the pastoral visit, they went back to Alexandria and we had something on their way to Greece visit. They had an helicopter crafts at the same year, 2000. And our bishop too was being changed. If I'm not lying, Bishop Damascinos from Damascus, he also took over from 2001 uh, to 2004. He is also, I may say in his regime, I may say his regime in Ghana is the fastest growing community in Ghana, the Orthodox Church. That is where we have the first time Bishop Desmaskin was enthroned into Ghana. During his enthronement, it was very excited. We came, all the parishes came together to celebrate the enthronement into our archdiocese. He got he first visited our annual spiritual camp in the central region of Ghana, whereby we have amazing temples in central region, a place, a village. Why should I say a village? Because it is my village called Gomwa Formana. That is whereby we have the ancients. Orthodox Church board and built by our forefathers. And we have another one in the same village dedicated to St. Mary, that's the mother of God. And the shrine where our annual spiritual revival takes place is also dedicated to one of our spiritual saints, St. Raphael the Guide, whereby the Ghanaian Orthodox Christians gathered every year annually to pray. Even the corona time when there was lockdown, no churching, so the priest went there to participate because it is our spiritual revival. And I may say, the Bishop Damascinos was also enthroned. Later, he was being moved from Ghana to South Africa. Bishop George came in to take the Archdiocese of Ghana, whereby I recalled Mali, Burkina Faso were also under his control. Fortunately, he was also assigned another mission in Guinea. So he also left Ghana and brought him a bishop. That's Damascinos. He achieved a title in Ghana, our beloved Metropolitan Savas, because he's a bishop of love. His love was even extended to everybody. And he achieved the title our beloved Metropolitan Savas. And in Ghana is the dominant African country whereby the fastest growing community where the Orthodox Church is being growing. We have many parishes and priests. Pardon me. My grandfather was an Orthodox priest. Fortunately, he's now no more living. He's was lack of us say. He's Junior brother is also called Alexios, is also a priest. And I can boast to myself in our family, we have the Orthodox priesthood match. And me, myself, I'm also on my journey to end my seven sacraments. And it is my prayer. And by the help of you, Tudor, I'm speaking to 
you helped me with the blessings of Petrarch Daniel from Romania to bestow his blessing on me. And we, our quarter, we honor our bishops, our priests. The love is deep in Africa, especially if you come to Ghana. The Ghana Orthodox Church has got a very beautiful, beautiful story and beautiful culture. And we, the OMCC, that's the uh, Orthodox Archdiocese of America, do sometimes visit us to teach us the teachings, the ecclesiastical teachings. And in Ghana, I bet you, if you eat, even meet one of the Sunday school people for him to show or explain this to you, the son of cross, Jesus Christos, in Greek language, we say glory to the father, to the son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the, our local language, we say, I worship God with my strength, with my heart, and with all my strength, amen. And we know the three represent the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The two represent Christ who came as a flesh. So in Ghana, you come here, we say, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Excuse me to speak the local language, which is popularly speak in Ghana. We say, enyonyamka ejano, obano, enyonyamkronkrono, amen. That is how we say. And fortunately, the Trisagion prayer, we say glory to God, glory to God. We have what we say, holy God, holy mighty, holy mother of mercy. We say, enyonyam enka ejano, obano, enyonyamkronkrono, we respond, amen. Fortunately, the, our bishop, Bishop Damascinos, invited the Petrarch, which was in the year 2013. That's where the Petrarch, His Holiness, His Beatitude, uh, His Beatitude and Most Blessed, Petrarchate of Alexandria, Theodorus, came to Ghana. On that very day, 28, I was in school taking my exams. That is where he consecrated three of Africa, three Ghana parishes. First, it was the Holy Transfiguration Cathedral. That's where the residential of our archbishop first consecrated. And it is each following day, he consecrated the parish, St. Nicholas Orthodox Cathedral at the Greater Accra region, which is Anathema Metropolitans. He rather moved from there to St. Peter and Paul College in the Eastern region to consecrate the church over there. So in Ghana, all our temples has not been consecrated because we have a very distant the, 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 the Petrarch. The Petrarch has now consecrated three church buildings in Ghana. Meaning we have plenty church buildings here and plenty priests. Fortunately, now there are few priests, but we are working hard in Ghana to bring people into the holy priesthood so that the work of Christ will move on in Ghana. And if you come to Ghana, in celebration of our holy Pascha or the Easter, is such a great joy. Most of people use the Julian calendar, some use the Georgian calendar, and it becomes controversy in Ghana because we use the old calendar. Anytime the Protestant churches celebrate their Easter before, and it becomes a big problem and story in Ghana. For those who read books and theologically know what the Octodos Pascha is, painting of eggs, People don't understand by now. They are getting to understand us. Now in Orthodox Church in Ghana is very known popular in Ghana. If you come to Ghana Christian Council, you might see the Greek Orthodox Church. In around 1974, whereby the youth leaders invited the Greeks to come and take over that, oh, you are Orthodox Church. You are not canonical and you need to be you need to be canonical. They directed them how to move forward and later we bestowed. And now we are canonical under the Patriarchate of Alexandria. 
And our current bishop is His Eminence Petros. He's in South Africa. That's where he stayed. And alongside before His Eminence Savas left Ghana, which the Patriarch assigned him a new contract in Sudan to continue his mission work there. We had a bishop from Jordan, Jordan, his Jordanian, his eminence Marquesos. He came to Ghana, he stayed with us, celebrating the every feast, especially if you come to Ghana, celebration of 31st night and Pascha is very nice and amicable in Ghana. We are very excited to have the faith. We are very happy to have the blessings. And around the year, we saw the global word, the Orthodox word came close. Is it six years or five years where we saw the Patriarchate of Alexandria, the economical Patriarch with Patriarch uh, Daniel, Patriarch of Jerusalem, Antioch. We saw them going to meet. And fortunately, our art priest, Father Joseph, who invited the Greeks was under the meeting whereby the Orthodox Global World met. He was translating into English. And I may say, Ghanaians are we are very lucky because we have a good leadership. And second, we have everything here to be called Orthodox Church. I was born by Orthodox parents. Okay, so you are you you are born in an Orthodox family, so that means you are baptized as on, as an Orthodox believer since you are a child. Okay, that's very interesting to find out such a, such a detail. But please tell us more about. And by the way, if you want, you can share images from your own church or from different churches uh, alongside Ghana, from Ghana itself, because it's a very interesting country with beautiful and magical landscapes and uh, I, um, I always told that Africa represents uh, probably the most mysterious continent all over the world and I'm very happy every time I have this opportunity to meet someone coming from Africa. I um, hadn't the opportunity by now uh, to visit in your country but I hope to do it as soon as possible because it's very interesting um, but um, tell us, uh, please, something about uh, your society. I am a Romanian and I know nothing about your country. And I'm very curious, as my readers uh, as well are, uh, we are very curious to find out more details about your society, about uh, different, uh, I don't know, social tensions, if uh, something like that exists in your country, about your political regime, something about your history. Of course, some details. Uh, we cannot uh, make a presentation, a large presentation regarding the history of Ghana, but something that you believe that might be meaningful to us. Thank you for giving me this platform again once. Ghana, my motherland, I must say, the black stars of Ghana, in even our flag, you may see we have a color which is design tray. We have the red, gold, green. In the model of our Ghana flag, you may have a black star, which signifies something. We have the green, which shows the agriculture or the power of Africa and Ghana. We have the gold, which means the red, gold, green. The gold, which signifies that the along coast Ghana, what you may find is only gold. Like if you get to Ivory Coast, you may see ivory. Whereas you come to Ghana, you see a gold. So essentially, Ghana was called Gold Coast, a land with gold. And you may see the red, gold, green. The green represent the spirit, the heart, the good, and the love of the people. And the black, which does the star. The star is very far. It's like an eagle. Eagle has gotten a very powerful, but if you see the star, it watches the eagle. So the star shows that Ghana is very powerful and second in the heart of God. Hallelujah. I may say Christos Anesti. If we say Christos Anesti, we respond Christos, that's Pascal greetings. And now we don't greet uh, Christos and next, now we greet Christ is in our midst. The response is indeed he is. Ghana, well, 
Ghana has gotten, gotten their independence at 6 March 1957. That is in the regime of our Dr. Professor Kwame Nkrumah. He bestowed and stand Independence Day for Ghana. And he is always remembered and always in our heart. If we see every Ghanaian cities or Ghanaian money, we may see his image on every money we use in Ghana because he fought a good fight, he fought a good race, and he has finished the battle. And he, we always remember him, him, we call it Founders Day because on 3rd or 4th April, we remember him because we put that day to celebrate Founders Day to in commemorating with our president who fought for the Independence Day. That 6 March 1957, I will be happy you will come and witness one day, six months. You will see our independence square will be full of people. Every school, every institution will be celebrating the independence day. First and second, we have our most politics match in Ghana. We have the new patriotic party, which is now in power now, which is our president, Nama Akuf Ado. And the second in command, that's the opposition, is the new. And this is the new Democratic Party. Now they are the oppositions finding to come to power. Our ex-president, John Dramani Mahama, is still fighting for the seat to become president back again in Ghana. Why his eminence, John Mahama, was the UN president. Alongside being president of Ghana, he's also a president of the UN. When he was being enthroned by Ghanaians, such powers was given to our new president as the Nana Akufu Ada Ado, the fourth Republic of Ghana. And I hope if you mention Ghana is in the West Africa and with our football, Ghana is now popularly known in everywhere. Our first World Cup had in Brazil or Germany 2006, we tried to move forward and Suarez spoiled the whole show. Ghana was going to the semi-final whereby they played the board and Luis Suarez from Uruguay kicked the ball out from the pole and people were asking, where from these people? Where from these people? Ghana, 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 nowhere to be found. Now it is in a popular nation in Africa. When, if you come in terms of football, you will see Ghana. Even if you go to the English Premier League, we have our players. We have Arsenal, we have Thomas Partey, the mud folder. We have Edin Ketia, he's also a Ghanaian. We have Andrew Ayu, Crystal Palace. And we have Daniel Amate, the Leicester City, back mid -fader. I may say, if you come to Ghana and you say football, even priests in Ghana also play football. So if you come to Ghana, you may say Ghana football is made in Ghana. This is what I can say concern in terms of Ghana. And I will be made much happy to know you more so that I can explore the quarter and well Ghana it is now. I may say the Orthodox Church in Ghana has gotten a schools. We have St. Peter and Paul secondary school is a college whereby we, if you go there uh, 27th of 25th in which we celebrate the feast of apostle paul peter and paul you'll be very happy you see the students the teachers the headmaster everything goes on smooth so that is in saint peter's college that is where we camp our omcc the orthodox archdiocese of america they used to come here to witness our doctrine. And you can see from here, I don't know if you can see well. I don't know how you can see this so that you can picture we can it try. well. Yes, we can give it a try. Uh -huh. You can see? Yes, yeah, something I, I can see right now, yes. Yeah, we have the act priest Samuel the late we have my grandfather at the model lack of us say 
And at the left side, we have the actress now, the current actress to Ghana, Archdiocese of Ghana, Father Joseph is also here with Mr. Alexios, the junior brother of Father Lakovos, with an it's very old picture. You cannot see it clear. But I'll try as much to take it to show you very well so that we can communicate very well and see how powerful Ghana Orthodox Church is. And we have the church is dominantly in the central region where the church is very dominant, where we used to organize our spiritual annual revival. We will see all the Ghanaian Orthodox priests there coming there to survive, coming there to pick the spirit of healing. And also, I don't know, here is our, here is the St. Peter and Paul College. You can see here, St. Paul and Peter Orthodox Business School in Ghana. And alongside we have plenty whereby I cannot explain. And I will, I will take time much so that we can talk every day so that you know me much. I also know me much. I'm Sabdekin Kipu Nicholas is my name belongs to the St. Nicholas Cathedral in Tema New Town. The Tema New Town Temple was consecrated by his beatitude, Theodorus II, under the Patriarchate of Alexandria. We have his eminence, Nakisos here. He was the bishop, the archbishop, Nakisos, from Jordan under the Patriarchate of Alexandria. He also came and served Ghana. And now he's no more here. In his absence, that's where we have his eminence Petros, our current bishop. So in Ghana, I may say Ghana is also one of the biggest, fastest growing community country where the Orthodox Church or faith is being dominant. We have here, these are, a student from St. Ambrose in the Eastern region. And even if you go to my village, my personal village, where we have the church of St. John the Christosom, we have the same there, a big school. You can see the OMC, the Orthodox OMC, that's the OCC from Americans, always come to Ghana to study with our children, the Ecclesiastia of Orthodox Church in Ghana. We have here too, a camp meeting which was held in Ghana last three years, last two years, and last year because of the COVID, we are unable to organize the campaign. By this year, it is our wish that we are going to organize, to move on the spirituality, and the faith which was being bestowed unto us as the Greek Orthodox Church of Ghana. We have here is His Eminence Savas, the bishop who achieved the title, the beloved Metropolitans to Ghana this year. His Eminence Savas. Now his mission is in Sudan, Nubia. We always pray to him, Isfola etide despata. You have speaking Greek language. And I will be happy to say many years in the Romanian language, if you may show me. And we have such a, I, I would be happy to do something. I don't know, it's, it's good for me to sing. The first antiphon. Okay. Okay. In the liturgica, in the liturgica, the first antiphon is "Mekra uh, Shra Erade," bless the Lord, oh my God, my heart, bless the Lord. Understand? Yes, I understand. Yeah, and there's, I will be happy to sing the first antiphon for you, because. Okay, thank you very much. If you come to Ghana, even the His Beatitude has promised to come. 
to Ghana with the lyrics of St. Mark the Apostle who bring the Octodos faith in Africa because of our musical singing. All of our priests, most of our priests are musical priests. They used to chant, sing good music and direct our path. Okay. We also know something to do with the St. John Christosom service, St. Basil the Great. We have all them here in Ghana as a parish and a nation. I'm now going to sing the first antiphon in the service or the liturgical service. We have the first antiphon, which is sung very so sweet, a nice melody. May cross Rahera day. Nami Mwadina Shra Nede Kron Krono. Shran Kawo Vera de Ono. Oh, no, they won't form so in a free war. Now, some they are away. For your don't for near a day. but you for none do yet. So, what is the first antiphon? And it is sing in Ghanaian popularly language called l1 and we can see in the english language we say bless the lord oh my soul i will bless the lord as long as i live i will sing praises to my god why i have been put not your trust in princess of men in whom there is no salvation when his bread depart, he returns to his head. On the very day, his prosperity. How beautiful and how it is to sing. The second antiphon also is glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. I hope I don't know. I'm going to sing it in Ghanaian language. The second antiphon. We say in the English version, we say. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I will bless the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God why I have been. Put not your trust in presence of men in whom there is no salvation. Okay, let me sing it in Cree. That's the local language. If you come to Ghana, May cry, ye radia ye. May tia si me ye radia ye. May wa we meto ju mama me nyang kupon. Mo ye fa mo ho ho. Into a hina na ni pa man. A yin kwa jibi ni wa ho so. Se ni ho ho mfri. Ye ko ho san ko ne do. Timu. This is the second antiphon. And the third antiphon, whereby the great entrance takes place, is we you know is very long and very fast more, and I cannot sing to plenty. I will just sing like two stands and stop. Remember us in your kingdom when you come into your kingdom. This is sung in tree, not English language. And in the English language goes like this, bless my soul, bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God why I have been. This is the third antiphon and we have the great entrance. 
I will end it here, and I don't know what you may say. If you come to the literature aspect in Ghana, KG1, class two, class three, or two or three years, can if you get about six kids, you can perform the divine liturgy because they are very good in singing. I hope. Uh, yes, I was very delighted to see, to hear this uh, liturgical songs in your um, mother, uh, in your mother tongue. It was very interesting for me. Uh, it's not every day uh, I have this opportunity to hear such liturgical hymns uh, uh, in an African dialect or in your, in your uh, mother tongue called uh, Ghanian, if I'm not wrong, uh, and different dialects that are spoken alongside your country. Thank you very much for sharing that with me and not only with me because there are probably a lot of uh, Romanian uh, who might be curious to listen to something like that and probably not only in Romania, maybe in other Orthodox countries and why not in non-Orthodox countries, in Catholic one or Protestant ones, they would be very interested in uh, finding out in uh, discovering something, something like that. Uh, on, uh, from a certain point of, point of view, I can say that uh, Ghanian orthodoxy is uh, probably something very exotic, as Ethiopian one or Eritrean Eritre one is, but on the other hand, is something very normal, because we should talk about a certain diversity. In our days, in Europe especially, we are talking about, uh, uni about the unity in diversity, about uh, cultural diversity, and uh, Nevertheless, we forgot about the diversity in Orthodox spirituality, because I can be an Orthodox, but I can have my own culture. Orthodoxy or uh, Orthodox spirituality doesn't, um, I don't know how, to, doesn't force me to adopt uh, a certain tradition or uh, to become from Romanian, as for example, a Bulgarian or a Russian or a Greek. You are an African and you should, you should always remain an African with your own particular, uh, particularities, with your own traditions, with your own spiritual heritage. And this is the same case with every Orthodox believer uh, all over the world. Anyway, it's very interesting to discover such a deep Orthodox spirituality in your country. And I really believe that uh, we as uh, Romanians, uh, Europeans, we have a lot to learn from, your, uh, from the history of your uh, Orthodox spirituality, from the history of your Orthodox uh, church. But I would be very interesting, interested in finding out more information, more details about the traditions adopted by Orthodox church in Ghana. Can we talk about any relationship, if I can call it like that, between Orthodox liturgy and different Ghanaian traditions? Yeah, we have the Anglican Orthodox Church, which is not under the canonical of the Patriarchate of Alexandria. And now we can also hear from, see from the internet, the Russia uh, Patriarchate are created their old exact in Africa, which is causing a great calamity or a big blow to the Patriarchate of Alexandria. And it is our prayer such issue will come down so that we'll be able to worship in, in one spirit and in one faith. In Ghana, for instance, we always have our annual spiritual revival in the central region where all parishes in Ghana, all members, Children, teachers in, fathers, mothers, grandfathers, children, they all come together to celebrate or to participate our spiritual annual revival, which is very nice, nice, very nice, very nice program. And there, that is where you see the journey of orthodoxy. That is where you see the spirituality of our Orthodox Church in Ghana. And I will not talk much because. Anytime, every day we go to our spiritual annual spiritual revival, we are being anointed by the holy unction oil. We pray, we eat the body, and we drink the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ unto the remission of sins. We are always open. People do criticize us if you come to Ghana, especially why are we in Black Castle? 
it's a big blow. And me being an Orthodox Christian can explain to people, people who are not Orthodox don't understand we, especially putting on the candles. And also criticism and problem we are facing is about especially painting of the eggs, the Pascal eggs, especially when we close from Pascal night, I keep some eggs from my friends. They'll be asking me, Nicholas, what is this? Why is the eggs being painted? Why is this egg painted like this? And I'll just come down. Let me explain to you because Jesus Christ came and died and you have the belief, especially when we splash it together with the egg and we eat, people do criticize us, but with the blessings of God, I know everything will be okay. And one day, the global world will see the Greek Orthodox Church of Ghana at the highest point. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing with me this information, this very precious information. Now, please tell me, what does it mean to you to be an Orthodox uh, priest in Ghana? I was telling something about uh, the exoticism of uh, Orthodox identity in Africa for us as Europeans, uh, because we are not used to see every day an African Orthodox priest. Um, in spite of the fact that for me, it's something very normal. I don't find something uh, very exotic, because, because as a matter of fact, I repeat, Orthodox spirituality must get used um, with this, uh, to this diversity. I think cultural diversity is uh, more than necessary everywhere, even in when we are talking about church or generally about religion. But tell me, please, we know very well that in Ghana, the dominant religion uh, is uh, Islam, if I'm not wrong. Am I right? Yeah. Islam and yeah. there are different different uh, in Ghana there are different local tribes maybe you could make a, a short a brief description of these tribes but orthodox spirituality is something very small I guess so tell me please what does it uh, what does it mean to you being an orthodox priest in a country such as Ghana is something weird or something that makes you happy or uh, the, something that makes you feel special I, Kweku Nicholas, believe in Orthodox faith and have the zeal and hope in it because in the Orthodox spirituality in Ghana, I know this is prayer rope. I hope you can see a prayer rope. Yes, I see, I see it very well. Yeah. It's called in Greek language, Koboskin. Koboskini, meaning a prayer rope. To be Orthodox Christianity, spirituality, to be good, to grow up in more spirituality, you always have to play with this. And the recitement of the Lord's Prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me a sinner. And with this, you can play a thousand times a day, and it increases your spirituality. And taking the blood and body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, also increase our spirituality. I'm very happy and very bold and I'm proud of my faith because I was born to be orthodoxy. And the journey from orthodox, if you, are, if you don't have faith, you cannot be orthodox Christian. That is what I used to tell my friends at work, at everywhere I go. If you don't have faith, you cannot be orthodox Christians. I have faith, if I put candles, it works for me. If I take the blood and the body of Jesus Christ, it works for me. If I take on the antideron, it works for me. I believe and I have the trust. One day, we shall be the king, the, the king of glory. Hallelujah. Uh, what kind of understanding is there in Ghana between Orthodox Church and other religions, as, as for example, um, what kind of understanding is there in Ghana between Orthodox Church yeah. or different Orthodox, uh, Orthodox Church, Church in Ghana is it's made up of many religions because if you go to the Vota region, the church is dominant. You go to the central region, it's dominant. But you may say every cat has a tail. There's problem everywhere. And if the problem comes, you pray to God that he will answer your prayers. And I hope that's the best. That's the best. I hope I've answered your question. 
Sure, you answered the question very well. But to US, for example, maybe it's a, this is a personal question. Do you have friends coming from different other religious communities, Muslim or different uh, local tribes for Ghana? Yeah. Do you yeah. have any, sort, any kind of dialogue well, with them as an Orthodox priest? When I was in school, in the elementary, I always put on prayer rope on me and I have problem, especially the rope in my neck. Why are you with this? Why are you with the prayer rope? What is inside? What is your faith? I have plenty of obstacles, especially my classmates. Why do you go to church and receive the blood and the body of our Lord and Jesus Christ? Why do you go to they followed me once to church and the priest was transferring the icon, the icons. Then what is why are you people bowing down to the icons? Why are we transferring the Icons. I told you no. The icons, they are triumphant and they are windows to Christ. And the understanding is very bad because I know they are human beings. Fortunately, they may not understand me as have. The sound is very low. The sound, the sound is very low now. What, what I'm saying is the problem is everywhere. When I was in school. I have a problem with putting on a prayer rope on my hand, especially when I was baptized. In my infants, I was given a, something with cloth. Why are you in with cloth? What does that cloth do for you? And a little bit of controversy with my seniors and my classmates, but with God, we pass through. And now, why are they sensing, especially the incense, which has got a very nice fragrance? And if, if people visit our church, hey, what do you see? Especially when they see the candle with different, different colors, they begin to shake. Is it in this um, secret society? Why is it like this? Why, and later you sit them down, explain to them one by one by one. And I have an Islamic bro, uh, friend who has converted to, uh, converted to orthodoxy. Because one day I was telling him something about, I told him Islam, Islamic is a false religion. And he said, hey, Nicholas, what are you talking about? I said, no, I know my angle. During the ancient, around 33 AD, Christianity was into them when Islamic came, when they are capturing Christianity, they capture the church building and put on the, they take off the cross and bring their logo. And I said, so, 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 so you have a point. And I even explained to him with the prayer rope, the Islamic has also gotten a prayer rope, which is called in Arabic, Sagbar. And I told him the story behind that. And I said, is that true? I said, yes, I cannot lie. And he followed me to church and saw it himself and everything was okay. And now he's also receiving the blood and body of Christ. For the remission of sin and unto life of what antenna. Okay, uh, now uh, considering the fact that you are an Orthodox priest uh, and you are through your own uh, spiritual identity, I think you are related enough to East European spiritual values because there is a presence. Um, uh, from the side of different uh, Eastern European communities coming from uh, Bulgaria, coming from uh, Romania as well. Uh, you are talking about uh, someone from Greece. Uh, there is also a certain uh, Arabic presence uh, uh, so, uh, through some bishops, uh, due to some bishops we, who are coming from Jordan, as for example, but you being Orthodox priest, you are very related to this East European spirituality. Why do I say that? Because you belong to a jurisdiction. And uh, it is well known the fact that every Orthodox church uh, must belong to any kind of uh, uh, Orthodox juris uh, jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction coming from, uh, I don't know, from different East European countries, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, Russia, Georgia, and so on. Uh, but you are an Orthodox priest in a country like Ghana. We are uh, we have uh, we were talking about uh, Ghana today, 
and uh, now I have a very clear image on uh, our Ghanian orthodoxy, on the presence of spiritual uh, of orthodox spirituality in Ghana, and uh, it was uh, truly amazing for me having this um, very nice dialogue with you. But now I would like you to make a description of uh, orthodox spirituality. As for example, given the fact that uh, all over the years I had the opportunity to communicate with different converts to Orthodox Church, they, all, they uh, have always told me that. Orthodox Church represents uh, a hospital for waving souls. Do you agree with such, a, with such a definition regarding the Orthodox spirituality? Or what would be your main definition regarding Orthodox Church? Well, thank you for giving me another platform to answer this question. For Orthodox spirituality and its field, uh, in the divine liturgy, we hear the priest saying, Wisdom, let us stand aright, let us stand with faith, and with one mouth, let us confess. Why the priest, the people who stand and say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty the creator of heaven and earth. As the Arabic we say, la ilaha illallah. And we have, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We see there's some uh, something triumphant here. And second to in the divine liturgy, we hear the priest wisdom. The priest will shout, the doors, the doors. Wisdom, let us attain. And in spirituality, we hear. And second, too, we see when the priest is making the change, the bread turning from the blood is turning to the body of Christ, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and blessing turning the wine into the blood. We see the visitation of the Holy Spirit coming to life from heaven to earth and earth to heaven because the priest will evoke and he will raise the chariots up south with a loud voice and spirituality or significantly you can see there is some spirit the priest is evoking straight away from heaven descending down to make the change. That is where we see the, the heaven descending down to make the change and later we will share it for ourselves. And you see, for me like this Sundays, I don't eat. If I take the Lord's Supper, I don't fall for any food again. Because I, a friend of me followed me, I received the Lord's Supper. I did not eat for the whole day. He asked me, are you okay? I say, I'm food, I'm food because my faith in the doctrine is very strong and bold. And it is my prayer Everybody will have such a faith so that we can all withstand. And in Ghana, we have Romanian people here. We have Russian. We have the Ukrainian. If you have the Ethiopian, we even have the Coptic Orthodox in Ghana. I have seen one Coptic Orthodox church in Accra, but I have not seen any once again. Only Accra, I saw one big Coptic Orthodox church. And sometimes they do to visit us. When the Pope came in for the second, his beatitude Theodorus came into uh, Ghana for the second time. They also came and welcomed him. Right from the speech, I will send you uh, videos and pictures when the Pope came into Ghana for the second time for the visiting, the pastoral visit to Ghana. I will send to you so that you see everything here. The Holy Ghost and the Octodos fire is burning. The spirit is working. The faith is working. Everything is working here perfectly with the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Uh, now I have uh, well, uh, one last question because we are at the end of our dialogue. Um, I know in Africa there are a lot of sufferings from different, from different point of, points of view. And I know uh, different African citizens are uh, persecuted, especially if they are Christians. I, I have to, to, tell, uh, to tell that publicly, in public, 
even if I have my YouTube channel is a very small one, but I know that in Africa, a lot of uh, Roman Catholics uh, or Protestant or even Orthodox believers are persecuted for, uh, for their own faith. Because uh, in Africa, we are meeting uh, a very strong, um, or uh, maybe I should say different communities, uh, we, which uh, don't accept the presence of Christian elements. And uh, this is all what I can say, because I, I don't want to generalize. And I know that uh, in Africa, we can find very good people which are, who are Muslim or uh, who, are belong, who belong to different other religious traditions. But uh, given the fact that uh, our dialogue was uh, focused on Orthodox spirituality in Africa and especially in Ghana, your, uh, your motherland, now I, this question would be the following one. What would be your message for your African and Ghanaian brothers who are suffering right now and who are persecuted because of the fact they belong to Orthodox Church? My... My regards to everybody, my prayers to everybody and everyone who is listening today. And I proclaim today and worldwide and orthodox global world. Today in Ghana, people are suffering, especially the priests. One priest is serving like three parishes, and you see him serving the morning service and taking participating in evening service in different parishes because sometimes even incense candles we don't get them because we receive all from cyprus some from greeks and now Greece economy is down and i may say the orthodox church in ghana is in many crises especially when it's come into rubbish like this the gums the altar clothes the incense and even a lot is a problem right it is our prayer that the good god will find a solution to us. We sometimes face obstacles. We will go to church and there is no incense. We will go to church and there is no more wine because we depend solely on the Greeks. And now the Greeks economy is very low, very down, and we are suffering. For me, for instance, my wife used to sew this garment for me. If I am planning to find small money so that you also sow some rubies for the altar boys, because it's not easy. Some priests even don't have this gamut. And I know with your help, you want this sinner's gamut and it will be published. It will be shared in the Holy Cathedral and everybody will see your name. There's Romania Orthodox Church coming live in Ghana so that you may have the blessings all together with the blessing from his beatitude patriarch, Daniel, in connect with our blessings of the Pope Theodoros, the blessings all will come and bestow in Ghanaians. And my greetings and, and what I will say less is everybody watching me today should have faith in Christ because if we believe in Jesus Christ came to die for our sins and our suffering, likewise, we also have to stand against Protestants, especially to have faith for our Orthodox and our motherland. This is what I will say this morning to you. You have my blessing for all, my blessing for everybody watching me live. And my greetings regards to everybody and you yourself too. I'll end my conversation here. Thanks you a lot and hope to talk to you again. My regards to everybody. I give the blessing from the Bishop Petros passing through to me as subdeacon Nicholas to everybody watching me live here. Anasta Hill. Thank you very much, dear, uh, dear father. How, how do you say Christ is risen in Romania? Uh, Christos an viat. Christos an in viat. In, in viat. Okay, okay. Christos an viat, I know. And we have the Arabic say, Amasakam, Hakan Kam. The Slovenic say, Russia say what? Right, forgotten the Russia. Christos was Christ. Yes, I don't know. Uh, Russian, unfortunately, just a little bit. I, okay. I, have I, also, I know the elementary 
of Russia, elementary of Ukraine, Greece, but Greek that speak Greek small, small, small. Efar is still. Thank you. Thank you, Ezrael, and hope to see you again in the very next, in the very near future. Thank you again for everything. May Thank God you. bless you, and uh, I wish you a lot of luck in everything uh, you do. Thank you very much. Thank you to my friend. Hope to talk again. I wish you a you very know, blessing. Thanks. Thanks. I give back my blessing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye -bye. I wish you all the best. Okay, sir.